Are you serious? Ötzi has rewritten evolution once again. What if one of history's most famous discoveries is being used to spread lies across the internet? Meet Otzi the Iceman, a 5,300-year-old mummy found frozen in the Italian Alps. His perfectly preserved body has given us incredible insights into ancient life. But here's the problem. His DNA is being twisted, misrepresented, and completely made up to support false claims about ancestry and human history. From fake images showing him as a pale-skinned European to wild theories about his genetic makeup, the lies have gotten out of control. Today we're going to separate fact from fiction and expose how Otzi's story has been hijacked by people pushing their own agendas. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what the science actually says and why it matters for all of us. Let's dive in. Let's start with who Otzi really was and how he was discovered. In September 1991, two German hikers were walking through the Ötztal Alps between Austria and Italy. They spotted something brown sticking out of the melting ice. At first they thought it was just another unfortunate modern hiker who had died in the mountains. But when researchers arrived, they realised they had stumbled upon something extraordinary. This wasn't a recent death, this was a perfectly preserved human from over 5,000 years ago. The ice had acted like a natural freezer, keeping his body, clothes and tools intact. Scientists named him Utzi after the valley where he was found. Radiocarbon dating placed his death between 3350 and 315 BC, during what we call the Copper Age. This was after farming had spread to Europe from the Middle East, but before the major migrations from the steppes of Russia and Ukraine. Think of it as a snapshot of European life at a very specific moment in history. But here's where the problems begin. Almost immediately after his discovery, people started making up stories about what Utzi looked like and where he came from. Early reconstructions showed him as a typical European man with pale skin and a full head of hair. Museums and documentaries ran with this image for decades. The problem is, this image was based on assumptions, not science. In 2023, scientists completed the most detailed analysis of Otzi's DNA ever conducted. What they found completely contradicted the popular image. Otzi actually had darker skin than most modern Europeans. He was also likely bald or nearly bald when he died, suffering from male pattern baldness. This might seem like a small detail, but it reveals a much bigger problem. People were projecting modern European features onto ancient people without any scientific basis. But the appearance myths are just the tip of the iceberg. The really dangerous lies involve his genetic ancestry. One of the biggest false claims is that Otzi had significant ancestry from steppe herders. These were nomadic peoples from the grasslands north of the Black Sea, who migrated into Europe starting around 3000 BC. They brought with them new technologies, languages and genes that would reshape European populations. The problem is, Otzi died before these migrations even began. Yet somehow the myth spread that he was connected to these steppe peoples. Early genetic studies with limited technology seemed to suggest some steppe ancestry. But these results were wrong. They were artifacts of contamination and technological limitations. The 2023 High Coverage Genome Study definitively proved that Otzi had virtually no steppe ancestry. Instead, his DNA shows he was overwhelmingly descended from Neolithic farmers, who had migrated from Anatolia. These farmers had spread across Europe thousands of years before the steppe migrations. Otzi also had some ancestry from earlier European hunter-gatherers, but this was a minor component. So why does this matter? Because people are using the false steppe connection to make claims about Indo-European languages and cultures. Indo-European is a language family that includes most European languages today, as well as many languages in Iran and India. Many linguists believe these languages spread with the steppe migrations. By falsely linking Utsi to steppe peoples, some people try to push back the timeline of Indo-European presence in Europe. But the science is clear, Utsi represents a pre-Indo-European population. Another major category of misinformation involves haplogroups. Haplogroups are branches of the human family tree based on mutations in DNA passed down through either the maternal or paternal line. Otzi's Y chromosome haplogroup is GL91, and his mitochondrial haplogroup is K1F. Online genealogy forums and social media are full of people claiming that sharing these haplogroups makes them direct descendants of Otzi. This is completely wrong. Haplogroups can be thousands of years old and spread across huge geographic areas. Having the same haplogroup as Otzi is like having the same last name as someone. It doesn't make you closely related. Think of it this way. If you traced your family tree back 5,000 years, 
you would have over a trillion potential ancestors from that time period. The chances that Otzi is specifically one of them is incredibly small. Yet people use these shared haplogroups to claim membership in some kind of special ancient European tribe. Then there's the Sardinian connection myth. Early genetic studies suggested that modern Sardinians were the closest living relatives to Otzi. This was based on the fact that Sardinians have high levels of ancestry from Neolithic farmers, just like Otzi. But this finding was oversimplified and misinterpreted. People started claiming that Sardinians were somehow pure descendants of ancient Europeans. Others used it to argue that Otzi was somehow uniquely related to Mediterranean populations. The reality is much more complex. Yes, Sardinians do have high levels of farmer ancestry because they were less affected by later migrations. But so do many other European populations to varying degrees. And more detailed genetic analysis shows that Otzi's specific population was quite isolated and can't be simply mapped onto any modern group. He may have distant relatives alive today, but so do most ancient humans when you consider how ancestry works over thousands of years. Another persistent myth involves the timing of Otzi's death. Some people claim he died in winter, others say late fall, and still others argue for different seasons entirely. Why does this matter? Because different seasons would imply different activities and lifestyles. Early studies based on plant remains in his stomach suggested he died in late summer or fall. But more sophisticated pollen and isotopic analyses indicate he likely died in late spring or early summer. This might seem like a technical detail, but it shows how early assumptions were wrong. It also demonstrates how complex alpine environments make preservation and analysis difficult. Some people have even tried to claim Otzi lived in completely different time periods. A few fringe theories place him thousands of years earlier, during the height of the Ice Age. Others try to make him much younger, from the Bronze or Iron Ages. These claims ignore the extensive radiocarbon dating that has been done on Utsi's remains. Multiple independent tests using different methods all confirm the same time period, the Copper Age, around 5,000 years ago. The archaeological context also matches this dating perfectly. His tools, clothing and equipment are all consistent with Copper Age technology. So why do people spread these false theories? There are several motivations at work. First, there's simple misunderstanding. Genetics and archaeology are complex fields, and it's easy for non-experts to misinterpret findings. Early studies that have since been corrected still circulate online as if they were current. Second, there's the desire for sensational stories. The idea that Otzi represents some lost race or hidden chapter of history is more exciting than the reality. Media outlets and documentary makers sometimes prioritize drama over accuracy. Third, there are deliberate attempts to misuse Otzi's DNA for political purposes. Others use him to support theories about ancient advanced civilizations or lost peoples. It's worth noting that legitimate scientific debates exist about Otzi and ancient European populations. Researchers continue to refine their understanding as new methods and data become available. The difference is that real scientists follow the evidence wherever it leads and update their views when new data emerges. Pseudoscientists start with a conclusion and then look for evidence to support it. So what does the most current science actually tell us about Otzi? The 2023 Comprehensive Genome Study gives us the clearest picture yet. Otzi was a middle-aged man, probably in his 40s when he died. He had darker skin than most modern Europeans, and was likely mostly bald. His ancestry was predominantly from Anatolian Neolithic farmers, with some European hunter-gatherer admixture. He had virtually no ancestry from steppe populations, because those migrations hadn't happened yet. He lived during the Copper Age, after farming had been established in Europe, but before the major demographic changes of the Bronze Age. His lifestyle was that of a small-scale farmer and hunter, living in an alpine environment. Analysis of his stomach contents shows he had eaten both wild and domestic foods. He carried sophisticated tools including a copper axe, flint knife, and bow and arrows. His clothing was made from various animal skins and plant fibres, showing advanced textile knowledge. He suffered from various health problems including arthritis, tooth decay, and parasites. These are the kinds of detailed insights that make Utsi truly valuable for understanding the past. The evidence also tells us about the circumstances of his death. He had been shot in the back with an arrow shortly before he died. There are also signs of hand-to-hand -hand combat, including a deep cut on his hand. This suggests he was killed in some kind of violent encounter, possibly a raid or personal conflict. He may have been fleeing to higher elevations when he was caught and killed. The high altitude location where he died was not a place where people normally lived year-round. This gives us insights into the social conflicts and violence that were part of life 5,000 years ago. 
But it also shows us the human side of ancient life. Outsi was a real person who faced real dangers. The advances in ancient DNA technology over the past decade have been remarkable. We can now extract and analyse genetic material that would have been impossible to study just a few years ago. This means our understanding of ancient populations is constantly improving. What seemed certain in 2010 might be completely overturned by 2020 data. This is how science is supposed to work. Our knowledge gets better over time. But it also means we need to be careful about accepting claims based on outdated studies. The lesson here goes beyond just Otzi. As ancient DNA studies become more common, we need to be critical consumers of this information. We should ask, is this based on the most current research? Are the claims being made supported by the actual data? Who is making these claims and what might their motivations be? This is especially important because ancient DNA studies often get media attention and can influence public understanding of history and identity. The real Otzi is far more interesting than any of the myths about him. He gives us a unique window into life in ancient Europe at a crucial time in human history. His story shows us how people lived, what they ate, how they dressed, and even how they died thousands of years ago. But his greatest value might be as a lesson in scientific literacy. The myths and lies about Otzi's DNA show us how easily scientific information can be distorted. They remind us to be sceptical of sensational claims and to seek out the most current research. Most importantly, they show us that the truth about human history is complex. The next time you see a claim about ancient DNA or prehistoric populations, remember Utsi. Ask yourself, is this based on solid science or wishful thinking? If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more content debunking historical myths. Leave a comment telling me what other historical mysteries you'd like to see explored. And remember, the truth is always more interesting than the lies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.